charged. And I am charged, and I am super excited to be, and, and I'm honored to be with you guys this morning. And we're just going to dive right into this. I'm not really good at introducing myself, but I do like introducing and proclaiming the word of the Lord. Amen? And uh, introduce Jesus. Amen. It makes me preach better. There you go. I'll say all the really good stuff tonight, so you, today, so you just keep giving. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, Bill said that, you know, when he comes here, he preaches really long because he feels like if he keeps going, the basket keeps filling up. <laughs> told me that before he preached. <laughs> I don't think I'm breaking confidence there. He was just messing around. But anyways, guys, I am honored to be here. And there's several things that are going on in my heart uh, and in my, in my mind this morning and things that the, God is stirring my spirit up with. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to do, and God give, gave me authority to do so, God said, don't you go too far, buddy. I need the shofar. I need my young boy right here. This one. Get the shofar. I don't know whose it was, but grab it. Where is it? Okay, find it. The Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me during worship, and then how things went with Pastor and then with Ron was amazing. The Lord spoke to me and said that He was giving me authority to stand here and to proclaim and declare an end to some things. An end to some things. Okay? I, you, okay, there you go. I don't, I'm not going to blow it. You're going to blow it, my friend. Come up here. The one that can blow it. I heard you. You can, you, you can blow it. But anyway, I'll just mess it. But listen, the Lord spoke to me, and there's going to be a reason why I want to do this, because I believe this is going to be an outward audible to what I believe God is doing in the spirit over this place in this season. I heard the Lord say that I have given you authority, Ryan, this morning to put an end to some things and to proclaim and, de and, and to declare the beginning of some things. And pastor said it, and Ron was saying about shift. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord, and I, and I heard the Spirit of the Lord really, really clear. And he said, Ryan, he says that you one of the things you need to proclaim today is the end of some seed time and the beginning of harvest. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what God just said? I just need to proclaim and to release this prophetically that God wants us and he wants me to right now just proclaim over you that some of you are going to experience the end of seed time. And God says, I am proclaiming and declaring over this church the beginning of the harvest that you have been waiting for. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that whenever I'm in Pennsylvania, okay, that's my home. Can I tell you something? When I'm in Pennsylvania, there's a place where they prep the ground for, for the seed. They, 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 they break up the ground. They spread manure. Can I tell you something? When you drive by, and then especially when it rains, when you drive by a field that has been broken up and a field that has been stinky and a field that has experienced water, experienced rain, it's messy looking it's ugly and it looks chaotic come on somebody and if you would wind your windows down sometimes you don't even have to wind your windows down it just stinks it just stinks can I tell you something I believe God wants me to proclaim and declare over this church that you guys are coming out of the stinky season the messy seasons the ugly seasons the seasons where things were broken and this is a season that you are going to see the fields ripe with harvest because the same fields that I drive by that look ugly and are stinky and are messy. Watch this. Now that we're stepping into and have stepped into in Pennsylvania, what we call harvest, those fields are absolutely beautiful. And God says that, Ryan, that is what is happening for Identity Church. You are coming out of the chaos. You are coming out of the stinky. You're coming out of the mess. And you are crossing over into your harvest. If you believe that, just give God a praise right there. 
But I heard the spirit of the Lord say that, and, and I'm a prophet and I'm a prophet preacher. I don't hear, I can't stand here and teach, but I just know what the Lord is downloading in my spirit right now. And the Lord said to me also, he said, Ryan, proclaim and declare that the end of the chaos is over and to proclaim and declare that I am going to pour down like rain, like a flood. I am going to pour down an absolute beauty that is going to take your breath away. The Lord also wanted me to speak and declare to you guys this morning. He said, Ryan, he says, I'm going to be coming in such a way at Identity Church that you they will not be able to stand for what they were standing for in the past. How many of you have been overwhelmed by the presence of God before where you just fall out in the presence of God? Can I tell you something? There is a move of God coming, I believe, very swiftly, very quickly, where you're going to be in awe. Remember whenever the disciples that were up on the mountain of transfiguration saw the glory and saw the presence of God alter the one that they were spending time with. He was transfigured before their eyes. They fell on their faces. And they magnified, glorified, and praised God. Can I tell you something? There is coming a time very, very shortly, man, where you are going to step into. This is a crossover for this church. I really believe that the things that you have been staring at are about ready to shift and you're about ready to cross over. God says, I want you to proclaim and declare the end of opposition. And the beginning of a shift where there's been opposition. And you guys are going to cross over into a new dimension and into a new place. And you are going to see an increase come to your seed and an increase come to the water. God says you have not been responsible for the increase, but you're going to be in awe of the increase because God is responsible for the increase. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, why am I doing all of this, Ryan? Tell them, tell them, because I valued my son, I put an end to his situation. On the third day, God breathed his life back into his son, and his son rose from the dead. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying, because I value these people, he says, I am breathing upon them fresh and new and putting an end to their situations in Jesus' name. And then the Lord spoke this to me. He said, because I valued my son, I didn't want my son to remain in the tomb. He says, because I value you, I do not want you to be beat up by the tossing back and forth. And so I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that you, you, his son, you, his daughter, you, his child, he is breathing upon and bringing new life where there's been death. Yes, some things had to die for some things to live. But the Lord says that the death is over and the resurrection and the life is coming upon you and your children. Children and your children's children, thus saith the Lord. I love this because whenever Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, there was a day where there was an end of that trial and the spirit of God, but, but the angels of God came and ministered to him and he walked in power. Did you see the transition there, the shift from battle to to power. Can I tell you something? Some of you are going to see an end of a battle and a beginning of a new dimension of maturity and a new dimension of power. That's why the enemy was coming against you. Because you were seeking God for more and you were stepping into the territory that God wanted to give back to you that the enemy has been holding for so long. And the reason he came against you in opposition was he likes it where he's at. And you are taking him out. But I'm telling you, I see the enemy exiting in your season. And I see you exiting out of the situation and stepping into the promises of God. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that the thing that has come against you to try to intimidate you on stepping onto its property and taking more territory for God, those things are going to have to cease and desist. Because God says, I rule. 
And God says, I am putting an end to these things. Enough is enough. You've learned what you needed to learn. You saw what you needed to see. And the Lord says, you might have been more, watch this, come on. You might be familiar with the strength of your devil, but you're about ready to see the strength of your God that will make your devil look like a little infant still in the womb. I said this a couple of days now, but your altercations are coming and bringing an alteration in your life and things are going to change because God says, I'm releasing my glory and my fire like never before where you're not going to be able to stand with what you stood for. But God says, you're going to have to move with me. And one of the greatest positions, your response will be falling on your face in awe of what God's going to do. And he's bringing change and he's bringing transformation and transfiguration in your life. They fell on their face and worshiped God when they saw Jesus transformed before them. But I'm here to proclaim and declare that you guys are going to fall in your face and not even be able to utter a word when you see the release of the new thing in God's glory that he's going to do upon the church, this region, and the people. And you're going to fall on your face in all of God, praising him for the alterations and the transformation that has taken place in you. Because God values you. And just like he put an end to his son's situation, he's putting an end to yours. Because he values you. The enemy's a punk. But can I tell you something? Heed this warning. The Lord says you are going to claim and you're going to take territory that the enemy has inhabited and has intimidated others that came before you and caused the generation to be intimidated in their perspective so they backed off. But God is bringing your perspective into an alignment. I preached on that last night. But your perspective into alignment to where you're stirred to fight but I believe that the Lord says you have fought on your face and you've sought God and you fought with God, not against him, but with him, against the enemy. And now you're going to be on your face for a different reason because you're going to step into the land that God has given you. But the th heed God's warning, new territory, new responsibilities. Not only new responsibilities, and this is where we're going to preach in a minute. I'm just prophesying right now. New responsibilities, new standards that your life will have to conform to. Because God says, I'll set the fire and I'll bring you into the land and me and you will take the enemy out. But you know what? There's instructions. For the Israelites, for the Old Testament was the law. But these instructions are full of grace and grace will empower you to steward in the land what you need to when God brings you into that place. It's exciting when you're like, whoa, we're getting new land. We're getting new territory. The end of an old thing and the beginning of a new thing. But with a new thing comes new instructions. Because God will bring the fire and God will bring you into the land, but you have to steward and maintain your presence there. Did you hear what I just said? I'm sorry, buddy. I brought you up real early, but you look good. So everybody admire the cute little boy with the blue hair. But anyways, <laughs> but watch this. New, say this with me. New territory, new, territory. new, instructions, new instructions, so that I can maintain, so I can maintain. and mature there. Because watch this. How many, of you, how many times have we seen, we would see in the Bible, God bring people into a new land? Or a new place in life. Give them instructions to maintain their presence there and they rebelled. They allowed the fire that God set in their lives, not the altar. Because how many of you know, and I think it's Leviticus, they set a fire that the priest had to maintain. That could preach. We're an altar, and the fire of God that lands on us, the altar, alters our life and changes us forever because fire can't leave an image that it touches the same. And I don't know about you, but I really believe there is a season. This is where I'm going to preach in a minute. God wants to refine where there's been defilement in your life and around you. 
through the fire because the fire can't leave the image that it touches alone and it not be changed. But new territory, new instructions. I'm just giving you prophetic word here. New test, new place, new, not, not like a new set of rules like everything else is gone, but I'm saying a new sense that you need to adhere to and submit to and bring your life into submission to and alignment to in God's standard, the plumb line. I preached and prophesied on the plumb line last night that you have to, to maintain your presence in that season. There has been times when I was younger, God would bring me into a new dimension with him and I didn't steward it well and I haven't experienced things like that. Because I rebelled or I didn't steward it properly. And, and one of the prayers you need to be praying is teach me, God. You can never change the presence of your sonship. Like you are, always are a son. But I'm talking about where the father leads you in life. But thank God we're under grace and he doesn't count us out. Because how many of you know there was a lot of repentance in the Old Testament as well and a lot of restoration, bringing them back to what the Father brought them into, but they rebelled themselves out of. One of the things that I keep on hearing while I'm here is God is going to bring the sons and the daughters who rebelled themselves out of something. He's going to bring them back to what they rebelled themselves out of. Prophets that were brought in to prophesy, but then rebelled and didn't steward their presence there. Well, can I tell you something? And they rebelled and kind of not like they delayed. They're not completely denied of that gift. It's delayed. God's putting an end to that and going to break their hearts with his goodness landing on their lives. Prophets, prodigal sons, whoever, it might be you. He's going to break your heart and you're not going to be able to stand with what you stood for before. Because you're going to be like, God, where you're leading me, where you're taking me, so good. And I'm going to follow the pillar. I'm going to follow the fire. I'm going to follow the presence. I'm going to follow your leading, God. So I want you to stand. Sermon number one. <laughs> but it was a prophetic declaration. Put your hands on your heart right now. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, I ask you. To bring me to a place where I am sensitive to your voice like never before. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Give me the instructions that you empower me to walk out. I want to maintain my presence in what you bring me into. <laughs> Now that one him, watch this, because when they would blow the shofar, it was a declaration and a proclamation of the end of something, but also the beginning. Now watch. They would proclaim and declare in the year of Jubilee that everything that was against people, right? Everything that was against people was canceled. If that be debt, that be imprisonment, and um, there's so much more I don't have time, but just a whole bunch of stuff that was leaning against them was taken off in the year of Jubilee, and it was declared by the blowing of the shofar. Now watch. The Lord told me to have this young man, because I heard him earlier in his impressive talent, blow this, and this is what led me into this prophetic word. He says, Ryan, I want this shofar to be blown as a declaration in the ears of these people that whatever has been against your family, that you've been fighting the fight of faith in, things that you have been, that, that have been happening in this church, this region, because watch this, I preached on Thursday night about exposure. And remember how God dealt with something temporary by giving them something more eternal? Took the fig leaves off and sacrificed and put an animal skin on them. Can I tell you, God only exposes things to heal it and to bring it into alignment according to his standard. And I believe that alignment, like I preached last night, is coming in to position. And I believe there's an ending of things that have been against you. Mark God's words today. You're about ready to set up memorial stones 
that you don't worship, but that you reflect on from time to time on what God has done and what he, and it will stir a faith in what he's going to do for you in the future. Does this make sense? So on the count of three, this is what I'm going to ask my brother to do. I want you to receive this first one. Just receive. If you lift your hands, put your hand on your heart. I want you to receive this first blow as a declaration. That is what has been against your family, what has been against you. God's exposing even in this hour what's against this region. That he'll use you guys as instrument tools of warfare to bring down. But God says, I will, I will show you what needs to be brought down. But God says that the things that you're aware of, he's going to bring down. He is bringing down, and he wanted me to proclaim the end of a drought and a season of wealth and a season of prosperity and a season of harvest starting to be reaped in specific areas of your life, thus saith the Lord. So on the count of three, I want you, buddy, don't let me down. I want you on the count of three to blow the shofar, and there's something significant about his generation doing it over your generation. Because can I tell you something? Numbers 13 and 14, there was a generation that the, that, the, that the enemy through the 10 spies got to. And it was the generation of influence. God needs you to get this to leave a legacy for this generation. But can I tell you something? This genera- you, you, some of you got to be okay with this generation leading you. Because they might get this childlike faith quicker than you do. But on the count of three, buddy, ready? One. This is just receive this one. One, two, three. Blow it, my friend. Receive it. Take that, devil. Come on now. Come on. Now this is what. I don't even know how long I've been up here. My teaching's not going to be real long, but it needs to be released. But watch this. On the count of three, we're going to blow this again. We're going to blow this again. I want you to blow too. I was just messing with you. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Join the army, join the army, join the army. The Lord wanted me to tell this church, you're about ready to see new, healthy, wealthy people come and join this army. Because can I tell you something? The church should, watch this, any excuse that you may have on why you're not doing individually and corporately what you should be doing in the church and for the community is being silenced in this season by provision. Well, we don't have a person to do that. God's bringing that person. We don't got the money. To, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this all applies. We don't got the money to do that. Well, God's bringing the money. We don't have the time for that. You better watch that. God's going to provide the time. We don't got mercy for that. God's going to send someone that has the mercy for it. God says this is a season that he is silencing your excuses by releasing provision. Receive that corporately, but you better let it penetrate your heart because there's things you're not doing in your home, man of God. There's things you're not doing in your home, woman of God, because of excuses, and you better watch it because God is going to provide for you and give you a moment of grace to receive it. And if not, then the enemy will provide something and it will bring destruction. (laughs) So on the count of three, God's bringing that provision on the count of three. Thank him even for that. But I want you to lift up a shout. I want you to lift up a praise. And I really want us to seal the deal with a praise right now. You praise and you're actually attaching your faith to that word, coming into agreement with it through your praise and saying, God, I agree. And I thank you that it's going to be done. You ready? One, two, three. Release it. Somebody release it. Release it.
Come on, release it. Mama, 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 mama. Come on, somebody. Give your neighbor a high five. Give your neighbor a high five. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I believe tomorrow is going to look different. Because of today. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Do you know what I think is awesome? What if you deal with things with God today so you don't, it's impossible to worry about tomorrow? Yes, God wants you to know that He holds tomorrow, so why worry? But the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God today. He says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will fend for itself. What, are you, what if you rage war against the enemy while you're seeking your friend? Do you know when you seek your friend, you seek God, your father, as well as your friend? That is actually the greatest way that you can rage warfare against your enemy. We think fighting the enemy is putting our gloves on and going eyeball to eyeball with him. And sure, there's times you do that. But I believe the greatest way to fight your enemy is ignore him and submit to God and seek him. And while you're submitting to God and seeking him, you're putting a whooping on the enemy. Did you hear what I just said? And what does it look like when in the midst of you seeking God today and God seeking after you and releasing in your spirit a word in the season of warfare that you're in? So where you come into agreement with that word today and it's impossible to worry about tomorrow and what you might face. Come on, somebody. What does it look like to seek God and actually seek him with the intentions that he's going to meet with you and there's going to be a kingdom collision where you're altered because he remains the same yesterday, today, and forever? And what does it look like when you have an encounter with God and he changes your perspective and brings your mind into alignment with his word today where you have a better outlook tomorrow because God gave you an assignment to carry out today? And you've come into agreement with it. You've said yes and amen to it. You put a praise on it because you agree with God and you believe God's going to do it. So you put a praise on it today. You rage a war today against your enemy by just seeking your friend. Do you hear me? To where you get so excited, man about tomorrow because you know that even if there's a giant that faces you tomorrow, you're going to face it and win because there's things that God wants you to accomplish that you've come into agreement with and you're persuaded that it's going to happen. And if there's a giant that comes, you know God's going to equip you to bring him down by his might and his power because God wants you to step into the things he promised you today. Did you hear what I just said? Can I tell you something? God is sending an alert to the enemy that y'all are getting this. Ha, ha, ha. But what does it look? Yeah, because the devil's going to be missing from your life. It's going to be really, really good. <laughs> but what does it look like? Seriously, guys. To seek God and get in an assignment that you come into agreement with in life. Let's not put days to it. So where you fight the enemy by ignoring him, it says submit to God, resist the devil. What does it look like to get a word, an assignment from God? And you realize if God gave you this word, he's walking with you as you come into agreement with it and walk with it in obedience. And if there's a devil or a demon that comes up against you to try to stop you, the power of God in you is greater to bring that thing down that's trying to bring you down. God spoke this to me, Pastor. Turn with me to Proverbs 15, 23. Proverbs 15, verse 23. 15, 23. A man has joy. By the answer of his mouth. In a word spoken in season, how good it is. 
not just the word that God speaks to you, but the word that you speak in the season that you're in. This is talking about right here. God wants to give you a word today that you come into agreement with and have an alteration in your perspective. To where, to where there's such an alteration in your perspective, you actually believe that word. And believing that word is not just saying you believe that word, it's you expressing it with your life every day. Knowing that if the opposition comes against you, that word that God gave you actually is a sword to be able to watch. And when it's a sword, and when you put your hope in that sword, you're at, and, and, and you're joyful over that word, you are actually using that word against the enemy. Hope and, a jo and joy is like a swipe of the sword left and right. And who, wh where are you throwing that sword at? Your enemy. God spoke this to me, pastor. He said, Ryan, tell these people I am giving them a word in season to form a sword to fight the good fight of faith in the midst of their season of warfare. Well, how do I do that? You put your hope in what God says. You be intentional to look out and, and look different and have a different outlook on tomorrow because of what God has spoken to you today. See, God will give you a word before the storm so that you can fight the storm off when you're in the midst of it. God will give you a word before the storm so that you put your hope and can have joy in the midst of the storm that... Man, I'm going to the other side. Right now, there's some opposition, but if I continue to trust God, submit to this word, praise him as if I already got it, I'm raging war against the enemy, and I'm going to come up on top as the victor, and I'm going to reach the other side. Isn't it crazy, pastor, that whenever God speaks a word, there's always opposition that tries to test that word? God's word will bring you into new territory. And I just said it in the prophetic word, but opposition comes in the midst of you taking territory that the enemy likes to be in. And others, listen, others have cowarded and run away from that territory, but God gave you a word to encourage you to go after every devil and demon that's intimidated others. God gives you a word to be encouraged in yourself and become courageous where you can be the exception, the first that takes that territory back because you refuse to back down from the enemy because what God speaks is of a greater value and reward to you. We need to start looking at God's word as a way to describe our inheritance. And we need to fight the good fight of faith, which means fight, get in the ring with the enemy. Seek God, yes, but then put your praise on and stand in that word and use that word to fight war against the enemy by putting your hope in it, becoming joyful over it, and praising and singing because of it. This is how you fight your battles, like that song. It may look like you're surrounded, but do you have a perspective where you see yourself surrounded by God? I used to hang out with people that would pray. God, I just pray, and I don't say this is wrong, I do this, but they would pray, Father, just surround our car with angels on the front and the back and on the sides. Just protect us and spare our life from accidents. And I pray that too. I want my family safe. I want to be safe. I want you guys to be safe. Right? Can I tell you something? God gives us a word, not just to point out where we're going, but he gives us a word to show us what he's there to guard and protect. And he also gives us his word to make us mindful of what's around us, protecting us and fighting with us so that we can step into what God has for us. If we pray for our travels like that, we should start praying and be mindful that there's angels with us 
in our journey with God. There is angels all around this room that I, can, I sense in the spirit that are warring angels. They're stationed here. Your pastor was walking the path of them. And I'm not an angel chaser. I seek God, but they're of God. And I really believe that even this message is just hitting the enemy where it needs to be, where it needs to be hit, where he needs to be hit. God, let me just say this, and I don't mean this being a perverted. God says when I speak a specific word in season, it's hitting the devil where it counts. Can I tell you something? Take the word of God seriously and take your prophetic words more serious. Because God says within it is your weapons to fight the season of warfare you may be in. I just thought you proclaimed an end of things and the beginning of new things. New territory, new skills, new, new things you have to adhere to. But can I tell you something? Yes, there's enemies you have to fight to get in there. But there's enemies that are going to try to intimidate you and cause you to rebel or try to get you to rebel because they're after your experience. So they attack your perspective. And you know, one of the most perverse things I think happens when we get into those territories, the enemy starts speaking to our perspective. How did you get here? And are you going to be able to maintain yourself here? And you have to remind yourself through the word that it's not by your own might nor by your own power, but it was by the spirit of God that you got into this place. And yes, there's things that you have to come into alignment to and, and, and partner with. But can I tell you something? It is the spirit of God that will sustain those who submit. Does this make sense? It's the Spirit of God that will empower you to, to stay planted where you're at. But it's through the spoken word that God gives you his weapon to fight the enemy. But can I tell you something? The word of God is also a double-edged sword. God's sword doesn't just want to encourage you. It wants to cut you. And cut out of you every perverse, spoiled thing that's in you and he wants to refine you by his fire by his word and by holy spirit and the greatest thing he wants to refine is your perspective and i believe when he refines a believer's perspective and their mind comes into union just as they were brought into union with christ when they said yes to jesus that's hitting the enemy where it counts because see, if he, God can get to your heart, mind, he can get to your heart. Right? What is, there's two things the enemy's after, your mind and your heart. Why? There's, there are positions of authority. And they steer the ship or can stop the ship. God's word wants to sit on your mind and sit on your heart. His presence, his glory wants to sit on your mind and on your heart because out of it flows issues of rivers of life, right? With rivers of life. Watch this. The enemy's after, because the enemy can't create anything. So to hit the enemy where it counts, it's you putting your mind on the, and, and, and saying, God, my mind is in order. Refine what's defiled. The title of this message, Refine God, I, let me say it this way, Refine, let me say it this way, Refinement and Defilement. Because God wants to refine the things that have been defiled. And it starts with your mind. As a man thinks, so is he. Why is the enemy after your mind? He cannot create a life for you. But he can pollute the one who has the ability to create, and that's you because you're made in God's image. To hit the devil where it counts, you need to renew your mind. We'll talk more about what that looks like in just a second. But my heart is, God, I want my mind to be a convergent zone with your fire. And God, when your fire touches something, it doesn't leave without changing and affecting the image of that thing. So when you ask for the fire of God to fall on your head, 
You're asking him to change and transform your mind like Christ was transformed on the mountain. But the enemy comes to defile your mind, spoil your mind by telling you, did God really say? The enemy comes in trying to cause you to create one of the worst sins, even though there's no level to sin, and that's listening to another voice. All sin stems back to selfishness. The voice of the enemy, the stranger, loves to entice the selfish in somebody. He's a master communicator of human reasoning and selfishness, and the enemy will speak to your mind to try to get dominion over your mind because he knows he can't create a life for you, but he knows that if you, who are made in God's image, can have and does have the power to create, and he can alter your perspective, then he'll alter your life. And he'll indirectly create what he wants through you by changing the way and distorting and defiling the way you think. Then the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. God, I want my heart to be a convergent zone with your power and with your fire. I want my heart to be that, 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 that. I'm a royal priesthood. I got to steward that fire, but I want your fire to land and refine my heart because out of it, out of it flows the issues of life. Out of it, death and life comes. Death or life comes because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Watch this. You, you frame the world you live in by what you choose to believe and declare. And when you choose to believe the lies of the enemy as if they are true, and you start thinking that way, you start living that way. And can I tell you something? When the, if the enemy can change the way you think, then your, your character is altered. Your character is altered. And then guess what? If he can get you to, 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 to then, it's like he'll, he'll call, alter your character, but then he'll speak to your heart, like get to your heart then if he gets to your mind. And out of the abundance of the mouth, heart, the mouth speaks and the world was framed by God speaking. And if we're made in God's image, we have the power to frame a world that we're going to live in. And now we are a, misplaced person in a misplaced place thinking it is what it is and can't wait to get to heaven when we actually have the power to change the way we think change our heart to where it changes our life and changes our declarations and what our life lives in and it can be heaven on earth but it's up to you what you partner with Does this make sense? Yeah. As a man thinks, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. God said, Ryan, the title of this message is refinement and defilement for this very fact. The first thing is one of the greatest things that need to be refined. And one of the greatest landing strips for defilement is your mind. Your expressions are the byproduct and the life that you live is the byproduct of what you're committed to and what you believe in. And it's committed to, and it's, it's the, your expressions of life. Out, you'll know them by the fruit they bear. Can I tell you something? The person that bears fruit, you can recognize what they know and what they choose to believe and partner with because of their attitude and how they live their life. And I'm not just talking about sin. I'm talking, I, I, okay, I am talking about sin because can I tell you something? Anything outside of faith is sin. Anything outside of, of faith is sin. That's why I think we need to confess our sins sometimes one to another. Hey, brother, I know this Jesus can do this thing, but I'm really not believing he's going to do it for me. And then they can sharpen you and encourage you in the Lord. And that's the power of even the fivefold ministry. But that's a different message for a different day. One of the greatest landing strips for defilement. Remember, I prophesied for a while. So this is a message. <laughs> defilement is defined as this. A spoil or 
a place where something is violated. You're violated in life because of what you've allowed to become intimate with. Or you're refined because of what you've become intimate with. Defilement, it is a spoil or a violation. But can I tell you something? Refined, this is what the Lord spoke to me, to remove the spoil. To remove the unwanted elements that are in your life and to improve by making small changes in your life. God wants to change the things around you by using you. But he can't use someone that doesn't believe in him. So he's after your mind and your heart. So he can stir something in you so that you can be used by God as a weapon to go after your circumstance. God changed my circumstance and he's like, that's not the thing I want to change. Calm the storm, God, and remain, uh, allow your mind and your heart to remain the same. Yeah, no. God's refining situations that have been defiled in the external. But one of the things the Lord wanted me to speak to you right now, and I won't be much longer, is God wants to refine what's been defiled within you. The places that you're even allowing yourself to be violated by because of your wrong perspective. You have the wrong perspective, you start laying with things that you shouldn't be laying with. Well, I'm just with it because it loves me. It don't love you, it hates you, and it's trying to rob you of what God has for you, and you're entertaining it and, and incubating it by, by paying attention to it. That's why God gives you a word in season to get your mind on something that you're su to submit to so that you have the power to resist the enemy. Hello? God will give you a word. He'll reveal his standard to you. To reveal to you. And expose to you. The thing that's off in your perspective that needs to be adjusted. And he gives you what to think and how to see it. But we think it's not for us and we need to pray, God, help me with my unbelief. It's, this is, there's, there's a season where we need to lose our unbelief rather than losing our faith. We need to find our faith and lose our doubt. If I can lose my faith, how about losing your doubt? And instead of just praying, God, help me to keep my faith, why don't you pray, God, help me to get rid of this doubt? It's the folly my life and changing the trajectory of my life and it's altering my life and changing my life for the bad and, that, and I'm open through doubt to things that are violating me. Change the way I think, God. I can't get away from the mind of Christ. God, give me the mind of Christ. To where I'm not intimidated when I roll up to a funeral, but I stand in the midst of the funeral believing for God to be glorified. I want to have the mind of Christ that when I go into the place where people ran from because of the intimidation of the enemy, I want to be so overwhelmed by God that he doesn't have, the enemy doesn't have the power to intimidate me. Because God's given me a word to look forward to. That hey, He's given me a word to, to believe he's going to manifest. So when I get there, I'm like, God, I'm going to trust you. And guess what? You create a space around you for God to use you and for God to move through you, to bring a convergent zone around you. But the greatest convergent zone is you, and there's things that he needs to change. There are sons living outside of the kingdom because of the wrong perspective, and they think that's God's will for their life. God wants us to get to a place, guys, where we have the right perspective and have some radical confidence and realize in our perspective and actually believe we're seated with him in the fullness of God. 
This doesn't make sense. God, refine my mind, refine my heart, and change the way I think. Too many of us are in abusive relationships with the enemy, and we're blaming God. God, follow my heart, follow my mind in a way where I can't stand for what I stood for anymore. That I don't put up with what I put up with before. And refine my mind and refine my heart. Because I want to be used as a, as a fired up person. Prophesying the right things, expecting the right things, perceiving the right things. So where I see the things of God manifest on the earth because I chose to come in alignment and put my trust in heaven. Does this make sense? I got my sweat break. Jeez. I know. I'll just use pastor's shirt. But anyways. <laughs> then he can sell it. Now I'm just playing it. <laughs> Oh, you're awesome. Come on, I'll take that. Thank you, bud. Come on. I feel like it, it was. I feel like David Hogan. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. That was T.D. Jakes. Sorry, it was T.D. Jakes. If you know David Hogan, he's like, he's got this right here. <laughs> That's so not me. But anyways, watch. God wants us to come into alignment in our mind. And he gives us a word in season to show us that we have a weapon to fight. But he also gives us a word in season to show us what he wants to do in our lives to change us. So that we become a weapon of his warfare. God wants us to get to a place where we allow him to refine the defilements in our life. And a lot of that comes to through through what we choose choose to believe or not to believe because of the wrong perspective does this make sense well how do i do that intentional pursuit start doing what you haven't been doing like pray serious though if you're hungry you go to the grocery store if you don't got groceries in your cupboard why don't we go to the throne room when we're empty of something? Where we fall on our face and we say, God, I'm not going to get up until you change me. Fire of God come into my heart. Fire of God come into my mind. Fire of God burn me. Land on my heart and learn, land on my mind. See, and God will bring that fire, but you have to steward it. That's why God was telling me earlier. I'm a builder in the spirit. Can I tell you something? That's why God was telling us earlier, he'll bring us into land and give us instructions so we can maintain our presence there. God will never leave us nor forsake us. That's not what I'm talking about. But sometimes we lose hope because we're not kindling our faith. Or we're intentionally seeking our, oh, the Lord. And, and, and you know another way? Remind yourself of the words God's given you. When's the last time you wrote down a prophetic word? And if you've written it down, when's the last time you pulled it out and reminded yourself of what God spoke? Because that word he gave you so that you could have a weapon in the midst of your season of warfare. He'll speak in the midst of your warfare and sometimes the warfare comes because it's trying to get you to doubt the word. When God gives you a word in season, the enemy trusts it and is stirred up by it. But it's sad that the one that God spoke it to is not stirred up the way the enemy is. The enemy is stirred up in such a way he's trying to stop and rob, kill, steal, and destroy. God is speaking his life in the promise of life and life more abundant to his believer. We don't kindle that word by faith. We don't stir ourselves up, remind ourselves of it, pray, and say, God, burn a faith and hope in me over that word. Well, you don't understand the circumstance I'm in. He hasn't left you. Connect with God. You're one with him. 
And there's things that God will do supernatural to stir such a faith in you. <laughs> Where you're just like, God, thank you. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. You come to God in a place of anxiety, but you should decide, I'm going to go into that place being anxious, but I'm going to leave that place being refined. I'm defiled by anxiety, but when I get into the presence of God and seek Him and worship and praise Him, some of you just got to be intentional to praise more. Whenever King Jehoshaphat and his people said, God, you are good and your mercy endures forever, did you see how there was an ambush? There was a word, there was praise, and then there was an ambush. He gave them praise. The people gave God praise over the word out of expectation, but also he's demonstrated himself time and time again that that fueled their praise. And they said, God, you are so good, and your mercy endures forever. And the enemy saw God that day. Whatever those those, those things were that he set up against angels, just his presence, set an ambush on the enemy, and they drop like flies. Your praise is more important than you realize. Praise him for the word he spoke. Come into agreement with the word he spoke. Don't be led by your fa faith. Faith isn't a feeling. Faith is something you have to sometimes muster up and choose to, to say, I partner with this. I don't feel like it. It doesn't look good. And because of what I see, I'm moved. But I'm not going to be moved anymore. I'm tired of it. Where you have to reason in your heart and be like God. Today it ends. I'm not going to live in this vicious cycle anymore. I'm going to trust God. And then you're going to see signs, miracles, and wonders come. And can I tell you something? Through your faith and you partnering with God, now God and watch this. When God refines your perspective, he changes your expectations, your expressions in life, and the way you express your life. And guess what? When you change the way you think, it changes your declaration. And guess what? You partner with God in your expectation, your perspective. Your perspective changes when you decide to partner with God. When you partner with God, even though you don't feel like it, it changes your perspective and it automatically changes your expectation and your declaration. And when it changes your expectation and declaration and you come in agreement with God, then you and God partner and get a blowtorch and start refining the defilements that are in your life and around you through expectation, declaration, and partnership with God through the right perspective. You can't run the plumb line God's revealing. And he's saying, the thing that I'm doing, I'm revealing the plumb line. And I saw a plumb line in the spirit that's on fire. And God says, my standard is going to refine the defiled perspectives of my people. If they just submit to it. Well, I don't understand. I need to have three points in a poem to understand what God's going to do in me. Can I tell you something? Well, if I'm sick and if I would ever have to get an operation, I'm not going to say, doctor, I need to know exactly what you're going to do. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I'm just going to lay there. That's now surrender. <laughs> I have resisted this, but you know what? Get me, doc. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just refine me, God. He does a work in you. And, and watch, what he does through you is hinged on what you allow him to do in you. And when he does something in you, it changes everything that he, and, and, and it allows him to express himself through you. And when you allow him to express himself through you and you trust him and put your faith in your declaration to, in partnership with God, guess what? You're going to start seeing alterations and refinement where there's been defilement. And I want to prophesy over you today, this last segment. God wants you to know that he's revealing his own fire plumb line. I'm not adding or taking from the word. I'm just showing you, telling you what I saw in the spirit. I know Amos 7 says that there's, of course, a plumb line, but it wasn't on fire. But I see mine in, on fire. And the Lord's like, Ryan, it's a refiner's fire. And I'm going to reveal to these people my standard, which is my glory and my fullness. And if they submit to it and surrender to it, and allow, the, and, and even and maybe intentionally say, God, burn my head, burn my heart, so to speak. Refine the defilements in my mind and my heart. I'm sorry, my mind and my heart. 
because God, I'm tired of what I'm expecting. I'm tired of partnering with the wrong things. I'm tired of laying with the wrong things and blaming you. Change my mind, change my heart, because then it will change your declarations and your expectation. And what happens is he brings all, because defilement is things that are out of alignment, and he brings it into alignment. And he purges you of the wrong stuff, and he puts the right things in you. Just lay there and let him give you that transplant. Let him do the surgery. It might hurt, but I'd rather it hurt and be in union in mind and in heart with God than to resist the hurt and be out of alignment. You want things around you to shape up? Let God shape some things up in you. I was in the secret place a couple of weeks ago and the fire of God came into my room. The presence of God was so thick and I was crying out to God saying, God, I want more of you. And he started to reveal to me what that more looked like, but it exposed what was holding me back. He said, Ryan, you want to be able to preach more unapologetically and you want these encounters and testify of these encounters, but you have traces of a fear, fear of man in you. And to protect you, I haven't brought you into those encounters yet until you overcome what's holding you back from that encounter. Took me to Mark 6. Jesus goes in his own hometown. They reject him. He says, Ron, you can't handle rejection right now in certain areas of your life. And he says, you know, what was he doing? He was starting to surgically cut out some things with the sword, the word in season, to help me get over in this season the things that were holding me back. This is so good, Jesus. And every time pastor, I would try to say something, he said, boy, just lay there. But I got to respond. You respond by doing nothing right now. And that's when he said, Ryan, those who are in surgery don't speak. They just lay there. See, sometimes we think we got to do something. It's not always about what you have to do. It's you getting over yourself and letting him do something. It's called surrender. Stop hating that word. And stop singing, I surrender all. It, this is going to be hurtful. Stop singing in church, I surrender all. But truly, that does not express the position of your heart. You're hoarding all and not surrendering all. And then you're wondering why things aren't changed in your life. It's because you're not letting God refine you. Stop overcomplicating it and thinking you need a Bill Johnson explanation to surrender. Just do it. Why are you going to do it till I understand it? I promise you, I have understood more when I was led by peace than I was understanding. And in that place of surrender, man, I was seeking God and he just moved in my life and he was hurting me. It hurt. He said, you got a fear of man and a fear of rejection, rejection in these areas and to spare you and to not rip you out, like cause you to rip yourself out of ministry. I've held you back in certain things because of the fear of man and the fear of rejection in certain areas of your life. He took me then to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah, before he became a prophet, was purged of his sins by God taking a coal from the altar. Refinement. Refinement where there was defilement. And he started taking the coals and he started purging the, ma the mouth of the prophet. Do you know what the Lord started speaking to me? He says, Ryan, I'm putting coals on you right now. I'm putting fire on you right now in these areas. Because God doesn't expose it to mock it. He, he exposes it and says, will you let me deal with it? Will you deal with it with me? Yeah, Lord. Okay. And then guess what? He starts, and he started burning me in the spirit. Can I tell you something? I've gotten to a place now because of that encounter. It's altered some things in my life that I am learning to not care. I don't want to allow. I've gotten to a place where I'm saying, you know what? The cost of pleasing man and rejecting the plans of God are not worth it. But it was because of that interaction with God. 
there was defilements in my life and I was walking around acting like I was good and perfect. And he humbled me, man. And then he sends me to Florida <laughs> to get beat up. <laughs> no, I'm messing. But seriously, guys, I think it is kind of ironic encounter on Sunday two weeks ago and then the two weeks later I'm here for my next assignment because I travel every other weekend because of my schedule. But watch. That's what God wants to do in this hour. He wants to humble people that think they got it all together and pull and put in front of them things they've been trying to run away from. Running from it is not dealing with it. Well, Joseph ran away from the woman and she, yeah, he did very good at doing that. But can I tell you something? He still had to come back and deal with issues. The things you run away from, God will eventually bring your little butt right back. I said butt. Sorry. <laughs> Brought you right. Bring, he'll bring your little butt right back. Little young buck butt is what he did to me. <laughs> Brings you right back. And he says, boy, you don't run from this. You fix this. <laughs> fix it. What do I do? Well, what do you think you should do? Well, the way I handled it was run. Maybe that's the start of it. I don't run. Yeah. And maybe I should confront it. Yeah, but no, you're not confronting it by yourself. And let's deal with this. And let me refine you. Because I want to remove that spoil. I want to remove that violation in your life. Because I'm a good father and I don't want you violated. That's the season we're in. And that's what God's doing, I believe, in this hour for this church is refining some things. It's separating the wheat from the chaff. Burning the chaff up, purifying the wheat. Because that he's preparing you for things. But he has to deal with the things that are holding you back from it. And when I prophesy putting an end to it, Maybe one of the things you need to proclaim and declare that you put an end to intentionally is rebellion. Maybe you need to come from rebellion to a place of repentance and say, God, move in my life. Bring my little butt back, God, and fix that. I saw in the Spirit stand. I saw in the Spirit we were praying actually on Thursday. Because God doesn't want to just refine the defilements in you. And what I mean by refined defilement, it's not like he's going to keep a defilement in you or a def destruction of thing in you. That's, part, that's removing the impurities. It's removing the wrong things, right? I saw street sweepers. So I saw in the spirit, street sweepers, vacuums, and power washers going up and down your streets in this region. And I said, God, what in the world is that? He says, Ryan, I want you to prophesy that you're about ready to see refinement where defilement has been, in, has been running up and down these streets violently. You're going to start seeing it. God's going to refine your perspective to deal with it through your expectation, your declarations, your prayers, whatever you want to call it. Because can I tell you something? We are tolerating the manipulation and the torment of hell around us because it's not affecting us. God's stirring up people that are saying, I'm going to fix that. God's going to give plans and strategies on how to fix it around this region. But the other thing God wants to make sure is that we do not fixate on everyone else's issues and hide behind their issues, the issues that we have. I 
I wonder if we can get to a place in our relationship with God. Because if you truly have relationship, you can do this. God, expose what I've done wrong. Expose what I've allowed in. Expose what I've done that I've been trying to cover up with fake smiles that wither away, with fake declarations that wither away. Show me, God, what I've done. That's David in Psalms 139. Search me, God. I I want you to find. I want you to find something that's in me that shouldn't be there. Burn it from me, God. Remove it from me, God, first. Remove it from me and refine me because I'm not wanting to put up with that defilement anymore. See, when God reveals, reveals his standard that he wants you to come into alignment with, he shows you how beautiful one thing is and exposes, it exposes how ugly the other is. <sighs> And there's things that you have taken into your today that are ate up with maggots and it's ugly, but you're still eating it. When God says, I want to reveal fresh manna to you. To expose to you where I'm taking you. And it will expose what's holding you back from it. God, I want that fire to come and burn those things that are holding me back that your standard reveals. I want them burned out of my life. That's what God wants to do. And then God wants to also bring refinement where there's been defilement around you. And guess who he wants to use? See, I'm a prophetic preacher. This is a prophetic thing right now. And I'm just pointing out everybody. I'm not pointing out specific people. He wants to use all of you. He wants to use you. He wants to use you. He wants to use all of us, man, to have a zeal in our heart to go and flip temple tables if we have to, to purge and to cleanse the defilement. But the zeal of the Lord wants to purge and prune and remove and refine the defilements in your life because he has a passion and a zeal for you too. So, This is what I want every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm not wanting you to leave here thinking you're not a son or a daughter. You're a son and a daughter, but how many of you know you ain't perfect? (laughs) And there's flaws in us, man, sometimes. We can have so many strengths on the left, we miss the three weaknesses on the uh, right, and we just obsess over the strengths and never deal with the weaknesses. Well, maybe they'll just take care of themselves. Nope. Small foxes spoil the vine. And that is defilement. And God wants to expose what is defiling you. And he wants to refine it and remove it from your life. For me, man, I go around preaching the gospel. Thinking, thinking, man, I'm strong. I don't have no fear of man. And then God's like, you do a little bit. (laughs) It's going to spoil the whole loaf if you let that leaven in there. Burn, he did it. He just burned it. I'm like, I feel so much better. I feel so much better. Now I know I'm going to go into those deep places and tell you about it and be okay if you don't agree with me. So, Father, I pray right now for my brothers and sisters. Oh, my. I pray, God, you bring that refinement. But, Father, I pray you would break them in a good way where they become willing. Show them such a good word that brings such great repentance and great humility. Give your presence in a measure, God, that it makes them not stand for something they shouldn't. Pastor, if I have a, if I if I have the, the 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 allowance, I have a word for you and for this church in a way. So I something I saw the Lord. Tell me, and if I had an actual key in my hand, I'd give it to you. But I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying that key represents authority and dominance over whatever is locked. The key holds the authority. 
And what I heard in my spirit for you, whoo, <laughs> what I heard in my spirit yesterday is God is giving you new keys. Not that you're getting rid of the old ones, but I see like a little side pouch of just all these keys that you already have, but God's given you some new keys. God's given you new, key, new keys. The Lord has given you new keys, he said. And I heard the spirit of the Lord saying that he's giving you, there's an increase of authority in your life and there's an increase of authority coming over this church, a, 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 like a key. He's given you keys to have access to things because he knows you're willing to step into it. He's no, he knows you're willing to go into it. And I see God saying, just say, Ryan, in the spirit, I gave you a key yesterday. It represents authority. And yes, you have authority. And you've been talking to me about authority. But I heard the spirit of the Lord saying that your authority is increasing because of your influence increasing. And God says that I'm, in, I'm expanding the territory of your influence. Just like I expanded the territory of your influence with your business, I'm expanding the territory of your influence and your authority, which is both in the same, I know, but I've, he told me to separate them. authority and influence in and around, and the radius of it's going to explode. I see like the radius increasing of your, your, your central location of just impact is growing. And I, and, I, and I feel like the Lord says that there's authority that he's given you to unlock some chains and to unlock some locks and to not just see people free, but there's things I just see you going up to and unlocking and stepping into yourself and stepping into with your congregation. And I believe that the Lord says that there is exposure that's coming because the door is going to be blown off the hinges in certain areas in this region. And you and your church are going to be a weapon of warfare against the enemy, but love, a weapon of love to the people God calls sons and daughters. And you're going to see an increase of casualties on the battleground. And it's not going to be people. God has given you authority to break down and to unlock people that have been starving to death in those shackles. And I feel like the Lord says that there's a season coming very, very soon that you're going to have more time to create like, like to feast, but also to create a dining room for others to feast. And there is a buffet in you. And God says, I want, I see a line of people and you're sitting on a chair and there's a line of people coming one after another, after another. And you are speaking and declaring and releasing revelation. God says, you're going to go into deeper encounters. Revelation's going to come out of that. And you're a man of great revelation, but it's going to increase. And that's going to be a sign of your influence and authority increasing. And God is sending you out more to be able to fix and to restore and to build and to heal things. Doors that have been shut and locked for years, God has given you authority to go and unlock the doors. I feel like there's a measure in you that you have yet to pour out and God says there's going to be a season that is going to be irresistible. It will be a pressure that haunts you if you rebel. And God says new books are going to come out of this. New messages are going to come out of this. And better, like, and like new messages, man, are going to come out of this. I see a sense of a transformation happening where things are just going to look different in certain areas for you. And God will confirm it that it is different when someone else comes up and be like, man, that's different. God's about ready to alter some things and change some things and bring you into different scenarios. But do not forget that the Father has given you the key to take care of it. I, I know you're a man that knows this stuff. I just felt like God wanted me to confirm it. And I feel like God says that this is a season that you're stirred and, and God says you're going to go into territory that others have run from and it's going to be major stuff. I feel like people that have taken major stances on things that you admire and look up to, maybe even fear, <laughs> are going to look at you and be like, wow, look at that man. Look at where he's going, man. I, I did not want to go there for years. 
God says he's going to even give you assignments that people, wow, God's going to give you more assignments that people dropped because of fear and intimidation. And you're going to carry them out, but the Lord says this is a season that you're going to restore the mantles to those who unintentionally dropped it. You're going to restore people back to their mantles like never before. You're going to restore people back to their rulership and authority. But there's places where God's like, they miss their opportunity, but I know my boy Charlie will do it. Step into it and go into it. God is breaking down some walls. God is breaking down some barriers. And he's bringing you even into some territory that you've been praying for. Just like you've been like, God, I would love for that to happen. I'm not going to rush this. I'm just going to sit on it. And God is breaking down walls. And what happened in the natural of you gaining new territory is just a sign that you are being given the keys that will unlock all doors to the things that you've been praying to possess. I just saw that in the spirit. You're going into realms, man, that you've been praying into. And so God says, I've given you the keys. You're going to unlock it and you're going to go into it. And I even feel like part of that is God's going to give you the keys that will break some things off and refine some things in your life. If that be stubbornness, if that be whatever, like I ain't doing that. I feel like you've been a man that said yes to, I feel like there's a man, I feel like you've been saying yes to a lot of stuff and you've told me so many awesome stories and I honor you. And I hear the Lord saying, there's still some things my boy's being stubborn in. <laughs> He's just like, I don't know. God's like, <laughs> but God says this, God says this. He also wants you to know, he also wants you to know Stop picking up keys he's not giving you. He's going to help you discern what keys are which and what battles to pick in this new season, even if the battles haven't formed yet. Feel like you're going to get the instruction, get the discernment before the problem and then the problem comes and you're automatically going to give people an answer. <laughs> I, nope or yep. And I felt like the Lord said this, and I, I feel like he'll be good. Is He said, Ryan, he said, Charlie doesn't even understand yet the capacity of what I'm calling him to in this new season. You are one appointment away of things exploding. And that's why God is getting your house in order, so to speak. And I know your home home's good. I'm saying your house business and stuff, you're going to get things in order and you're going to get instructions to get those things in order before the blessings start pouring out the way they're going to. And you being obedient and getting your house in order is actually commanding the blessings that are going to take you away more and you're going to have to have your house in order. God says you don't have to sell the house, so to speak, metaphor. You don't have to sell the house. God says you're just going to train and equip for people to run the house so that you can keep running with God. So Father, I bless this man of God and I thank you for the provision of heaven. And that's the other thing. God says all excuses are going to be provided for in this next season. Excuses you've heard or excuses you've formed are going to be provided for and you'll have no excuse. They'll have no excuse. Father, I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe that word for your pastor, if this is your church, give them a thanks. Where do you need refinement? Where has there been defilement? Maybe in your mind, your heart, or maybe something in you like a sickness or maybe something around you like a storm. If you want to partner with this word right now and say, you know what, I believe, I'm going to partner with this word and come up front as a sign that I'm coming into agreement that God is going to refine where there's been defilement. Get up here right now.